If we could begin from the very beginning, because I had some difficulties finding background info on you online. Are you a very private person? Uh, so, uh, what's the backstory? How did you get your start in music? Um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like a really private person. I think more people are just now finding out about us. So maybe it's we've been doing this thing for about eight years, probably. But just in the last year or two is kind of when people started paying attention. So uh, I got started in music though from my dad. Yeah, he was really into really into rock and roll and always taking me to shows when we were younger. So I got into music and fell in love with it just because really because my dad, you know, he was a huge rock and roll fan growing up and that led to me wanting to learn how to play drums and then getting into guitar, which eventually led me to songwriting. So it all kind of stemmed off of him. Yeah. Did you kind of always know that you wanted to uh, be a solo artist or did you like go through a lot of bands in your youth? There wasn't a lot of bands necessarily, but uh, I did. I used to play drums for a couple of other bands. And so I started out on that into things like when I was in college and high school, I was just playing drums for other people. And then once I kind of, I don't know, I guess I got tired of like doing the cover band thing, you know, like I wanted to just do something original and, and new. And that's when I really started writing on my own. And then I'm just, I'm, I'm a competitive person. And I knew the first, the first stuff that you do in anything really, it's usually not your best, you know, it takes a while to get good at something. So I just wanted to like beat myself with every song and every record and every guitar part. And so I just really started to be competitive with myself and that's what's led to the current record black sheep. So that was just like a accumulation of uh, a lot of things like playing music, you know, since I was younger and then uh, writing songs and, and putting out records and stuff for like, to like the last, I don't know, eight years or so uh just trying to always like be better than than the last attempt you know and just like keep challenging yourself so that's kind of how we got here okay yeah uh, talking about original uh how is the music scene there in texas and how does austin mead fit in that scene we started i guess i guess you can call it touring that's kind of more like just playing shows kind of the weekend warrior thing you know where you just do kind of weekend gigs around and that was getting our foot into the door playing bigger venues and playing in front of more people um it came from playing around like the texas scene and 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 doing that and there's a really great there's a great fan base down here um people love music and they love going out to see live events there's a lot of great opportunities to play outdoor places that are really big there's some historic clubs and venues all over the place and i've just been lucky to like grow up here where there is a thriving music scene in my opinion so it's not necessarily it, it probably looks a lot different than it did like back in the 90s and 2000s early 2000s i'm sure but for us college towns have been really good um i graduated in college in 2015 and had a bunch of friends that, that were my same age at different colleges. So we kind of started hopping around different college towns and doing that thing. And, you know, then people graduate college and move off and get jobs and start families in other bigger towns. And so if you can start building that, like, uh, I don't even know if fan base is the right word, but if you can start getting people to listen to your music at that age, then when they go off and if, if your music is, I guess timeless is what I'm trying to do. Something that means more than just like a something for young folks, right? Something that I'm going to sing whenever I'm old and I'm still proud of it. I think though, by making music like that, that whenever people do move off and, and keep going through their different stages of life, they'll still come back to your stuff and you could kind of evolve with them as an artist unintentionally. Um, but for, as far as like Texas goes, yeah, regional stuff is uh, really how we started. And I've definitely 
tried to spread my wings and, and grow. And we've got some, a lot of big stuff coming up this summer that's in new places in the U S and I'm really hoping to get out of the U S soon too. There's a lot of talking going on right now behind the scenes about us heading over to quite a few places. So I'm getting excited. I'm all giddy about seeing new places that we've never been before and actually getting to live that dream that since I was a kid of like touring the world through a, a job, I really feel like I'm just lucky. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned, uh, challenging yourself with each album again and again so uh, how did it all uh, your sound evolve to black sheep how do you see it because black sheep is very much a rock and roll album yeah i think that at the beginning i was uh, it sounded more country-ish just because i was kind of surrounded by that and i grew up in a small town in central texas and and in south texas i kind of moved around a lot as a kid but generally you know like it was like the country and the outlaw country that was kind of famous or not not the only thing but was pretty prevalent like you go out on the weekends to go to dances right or to go to uh you know you see you go see a country band you go go try to dance with some pretty girls or whatever your thing is you know on the weekends that's kind of like what we did growing up in high school and um in college and stuff and I guess because I was just so surrounded by that early on that it had some kind of influence on the music. And I also didn't know who I was yet as an artist. So I was just kind of trying to emulate stuff. Oh, this sounds cool. Let's try this. I don't know how to make a guitar sound super badass though yet, you know? Um, so then I, I always loved like eighties rock and stuff because that's what my dad kind of had me grow up on, you know, white snake and maiden and, like cheap trick a lot of that stuff um so i always thought it was cool but i i guess i was like when i was younger it's like well i gotta i gotta listen to my own thing and not just what my dad's listening to right so a lot of my friends were listening to more country stuff so i was listening to that at parties and doing you know the weekend thing and uh just over time really got back into like the heavier music and What I try to do now with 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 Black Sheep, especially, was like a a big step big step in the right direction, I think. And I'm trying to like stay honest with honest and simple with the songwriting, kind of like those country um, like outlaws and the the country music that I was a fan of growing up. Like it was pretty simple and direct songwriting, right? And They're just telling you how they feel, but they still make you think about it. And it's like very relatable to me to be able to listen to a song and feel like you're in that room with that person. So I wanted to keep those honest aspects and like simplicity of songwriting from the countryside mixed in with like the rock and roll tones and the rock and roll drums and and just more energy. Right. So and it 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 uh, it's really nothing we didn't it's hard to explain i don't ever want to th- people to think that we just sat down and we're like we want to sound like this exactly in this little box because we never have that goal we just go in and just try to do what we think sounds cool and like us and and unique so with black sheep it was like my declaration of hey um just because i grew up surrounded just in like southern culture and and country music like i'm not that right and my dad He actually grew up uh, by Chicago and then ended up moving down to South Texas when he was really young. So he's kind of a transplant because there was a there was bell bottoms and sparkly stuff up there, right up north. And then he moved down to South Texas and he's like the only Yankee there. So that was when he was young, but he had like just kind of formed who he was with his style and everything. Right. So he was kind of the black sheep, I think, growing up for a while. And I, I guess that rubbed off on me at some point. <laughs> Yeah, about that honesty you uh, talked about. So what are these 12 songs about on Black Sheep? Man, uh, if I went into everyone, we'd be here all day. Um, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll give a, I'll kind of try to think of the track listing in my head and give a quick overview. So Dopamine Drop was me trying to um, visualize whenever dopamine hits your brain, right? Is it? And you get like good feelings. Does it 
slowly seep in to your brain? Is it like a smooth substance or does it just bam, splatter the walls? Is it very messy whenever it enters your brain? And I, I kept thinking about that for a while and I wanted to write a song that kind of challenged that, right? Um, which that's why the opening line of the record is I'm addicted to everything that dopamine drop. Like what everybody's trying to find what makes them feel good. Right. That's what the goal is in life. I want to feel good now. And I tried to think about that when writing that and, and our guitar player, Willie uh, was awesome at making that sound like I had in my head. Right. So like, is that dopamine? Is it like a smooth thing coming into your brain or is it just an absolute chaotic, hard mess, you know? So that's kind of what started that song. Um, and the chorus in that one just, you know, I, I'm not the kind that likes a love song. I hate the way it makes me feel to think of holding you closely, but to know you'll never be here. Um, just like the, a, a reoccurring theme that comes up a lot in black sheep is, is just, uh, admitting you're not good enough and that people could find better than you and just saying it and getting it out of your system rather than just thinking and just like burying that in the back of your head. And that happened through a lot of the songs. Um, the next one's cave in and I think cave in's pretty, pretty self-explanatory along the lines of, of listening to the lyrics. Um, it just goes back to that brutal honesty thing of instead of like letting feelings and thoughts and like conflict build up in your own head just speaking it out into the world into that relationship or friendship or whatever it is even a business relationship like just letting people know how you feel in the moment and um not just bottling it up to yourself you know and we wanted to capture the moments of have you ever bottled something up and it just it just bugs you so much it just annoys you and then you finally have the breaking point right where you're like that's it i can't take it anymore and that's what we try to do with the guitars so we bottled up this like tension um through lyrics and through rhythms and stuff and then bam wacky with that guitar uh right after like a lot of the main lines on cave in so yeah, then Creeps was just me. Um, honestly, I got really stoned uh, by myself at the house and just started freaking out, you know, and I was really paranoid. That happens to me a lot. If I'm, if I'm alone and it's dark and I'm, you know, go a little bit too far, then I'm just like, I get really paranoid. I'm always checking the doors. I'm always checking the windows, that kind of a thing. And um, especially if I'm in a new place, cause we're a lot of the times we're not at home, right. We're like traveling. I'm at a, I'm at a random Airbnb right now. Cause we're at the studio. Um, so, you know, it's easy to become uncomfortable for me if I'm not like in a familiar place, but unfortunately, like that's what we do for a living is, is go to new places. So I'm always challenging myself. So for me, creeps was like, um, I guess enjoying being paranoid and kind of laughing at myself a little bit from that also my last record before this one uh on it was called waves right and there's a line in the in the main title track from that that says i'll hold my ground till the come down goes away and i wanted to tie back in lyrically to the last record so on this record on creeps um says i close my eyes and try to calm down a life sentence of a come down and so it was kind of like, I am extremely fucked. I'm always, cause on the last record, I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hold it together till the come down goes away. And then this record, I'm like, dude, you're on a life sentence of a come down. So I wanted to kind of tie that back in together. Um, so I'm trying to fly through these so you can kind of get a lot of, a lot of, uh, of my thoughts that at least started these songs. Happier Alone was just me being again, like trying to be brutally honest, you know, like, Hey, there's a lot of better people out there. So you, you might not want to waste your time with me because like, I've missed a lot of things because of this career, like some of my best friends, weddings and, and some family events and, and things like that. And I guess it's me feeling selfish in a way, because this is kind of, it really is one of the, the most selfish jobs you could do, right? Like I'm making music and touring so that people will sing our lyrics and it's awesome but it's also sometimes when i look at it like 
probably the most selfish thing I could have done. Right. Um, there's different ways to see it. And so sometimes that thought creeps into my head, I guess. Um, especially whenever people aren't really paying attention to what we're doing. Like if we go and have a bad show and, you know, or if we feel like something didn't pay off in the way that we thought it was going to, it's like, man, why did I do this? Why did I waste all this time and effort on this thing? Like, am I pursuing the wrong thing? Just those doubts that kind of come back into your head. And it's not necessarily just with music. I think that that can be applied to a lot of folks that go off and do something new and different and try to be the black sheep or try to be something that's not the typical, you know, job thing. Right. And, um, so happier lungs, just like me really writing that down on a paper saying like, are you sure that you want to be my friend or, you know, spend your time with me in a relationship whenever I'm already telling you at the beginning, like I'm going to go do this thing. And I have already committed to myself to go doing this thing. So I can't change what I'm doing for somebody else. And it sounds awesome and fun at the beginning, but along the road you do come to quite a few like uh forks i guess in the road or like new decisions that you have to make on missing those family events and stuff and so that's kind of where happier alone stemmed from uh i'll jump to a couple other ones though that that really stick out in my head right now obviously the title track black sheep um that's me making that statement you know it's like the middle finger like hey i'm the fucking black sheep I'm going to keep doing this. I'm reassuring myself that like, I know that I am finally finding where I think I want to be as an artist. Like black sheep was the most confident and honest version of myself up like this far. Um, And the verses in that song are also challenging myself. It says, I hate how it sneaks up. I hate how it holds you down. Comfort is a hard drug. Is it money that keeps you around? So that's me saying, literally, why are you working this job if you don't like it? Like, are you only here because of the money? Because the money doesn't go with you anywhere else. Like comfort is a hard drug. And and that comfort can be money. It can be uh, a relationship. It can be a car. It can be a house. It can be a lot of different things. But for me, it's really challenging to just think about that line. Comfort is a hard drug because some people get hooked on actual, you know, drugs, alcohol, things like that. But it's also really easy just to get hooked on Netflix or or just sit there and watch movies all day. Right. Um, Sit there in the comfort of your own home and complain about your job or your life or your current situation. And then five years later, you're still there just complaining about the same thing because you haven't challenged yourself to get out of it. So it's kind of a calling uh, of action, I guess, is the big general theme of the record. Like, I'm different and I'm going to keep myself accountable and make myself keep moving forward in what I'm doing because it's challenging myself. And I think that it is helping me stretch and become a new human being and um, just like not get stale and not just sit in the same place for my whole life because I don't want to be the same person that I was five years ago. I think that's not good for anybody. If you're the same person that you were five years ago, something's, there's gotta be something weird. There should, I feel like there should be some things changing and there should be in a better way, right? Like we should always be competitive. Like I was saying about the songs that I've tried to do in the, in the records. And that's kind of what keeps me going and keeps me driving. Cause trust me, it's not always fun to be like touring around in a van and trailer it, it's cool when you're at the show and like it, it's cool for a while, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that are not fun. And you have to push through those moments to get to the cool ones. Um, and a lot of times people just see the cool moments, you know? So just staying on myself really and saying, keep going, man, you're, you're the black sheep and, and you're not alone. There's a whole community of people that want to do the same thing. And it's kind of like a, it's, it's like a calling, I guess. I, I, I want people to feel like it's okay to pursue things that you, that are different, right? It's okay to be selfish for a little bit and eventually hopefully have a platform to do something good for others. I think that's really the goal. Yeah. Yeah. You've been talking about the competitive nature 
Uh, do you like, um, of course, uh, some of the songs on Black Sheep have been ready for uh, some time already. Do you all already have kind of a feeling like where that, uh, like challenging yourself will take you next? Yeah, uh, we're actually, like I mentioned earlier, we're actually in the studio right now. I'm going as soon as I get off the phone here, I'm going back to the next record. We've been here for a week and a half. And so I've already got the new record. Like, I feel like these songs are even better than Black Sheep. Um, and I'm not, I'm not by any means cutting Black Sheep short. I, I really do love that record and I'm, I'm proud of it. I stand by it and I, and I smile every time I hear it really. Um, and it's, it's honestly changed my life. Um, but I'm very much so trying to kick my own ass for this next record. Like I'm trying to outdo everything on that one. 